Hello and welcome to this episode of uh, Narrowboat Astronomer, uh, vlog 5 I think it is. Uh, in this one you'll notice uh, I'm sitting on the boat but not really, uh, making use of the green screen uh, technology just to get the feel uh, uh, or appearance of sitting on the boat. Mm -hmm. In this episode uh, we'll be looking at some projects that I have going through May. Um, uh, there's another lens that I want to try on the front of the camera so I'll be interchanging that with the lens that I showed you last week. Uh, same camera, um, just a different type of lens. It's a, a more sort of DSLR type camera lens. Uh, an old one but uh, with a special adapter which I'll show you uh, in a moment. Uh, you'll see how that screws onto the camera. It can uh, make old lenses quite useful for new cameras. And then I'll be showing you two uh, lunar projects. One is a Lunar quest that I'll be starting, which is a slew lunar quest. So I'll show you how we go through those uh, quests and collect uh, the phases of the moon and uh, put those into a quest poster. And uh, the other one is a backyard project. So using that camera uh, arrangement that I showed you in the last vlog, but with the new lens as well, uh, we'll be looking at the moon and conjunctions of planets throughout May. So hopefully we'll be capturing a few of those and uh, we can put some initial results of that back into the vlog but I might have to show some in the next vlog uh, simply because of uh, timing and how long it takes me to get around to get into those uh, conjunctions but I'll list them out in this vlog so you'll know when they're coming. Um, the other projects I've got going will be to um, image uh, and I've got some images already uh, a new comet that was discovered in 2020 called uh, 2020 uh, F8 Swan only visible from the Southern Hemisphere at the moment, uh, or at least easily visible from the Southern Hemisphere, but it's just starting to lose it and move into the Northern Hemisphere, but it's getting a bit close to the Sun. Um, but I'll show you some images from that and I'll show you the setup uh, of the next image uh, that I do for SLU on that, and uh, yeah, we'll see some results of that as well. So uh, next I'll list out those conjunctions that are coming up uh, throughout May uh, that you can uh, follow in this vlog and the next and uh, I'll also show you the configuration the new configuration of the camera with the uh, the uh, the new lens that we'll be using in addition to the the one I showed you in the last vlog the new camera combination then um, okay so here is the original then um, so this is the one we showed on the last vlog with the CCTV lens on and the Malincam DS287C. Um, so what I need to do is put a different lens on this. So we just simply unscrew this one. And this leads to two confessions because after I put this one back on, or as I was putting that small CCTV lens back on, I actually dropped this, <laughs> the one that I was going to say I'm, uh, I'm adding. So this is an old uh, DSLR lens um, that I had lying around. It's a 200 millimeter Vivitar lens. And you can see that it doesn't match. <laughs> it doesn't screw onto there. So um, from various sources, you can get adapters for many cameras. And what I needed here was a C-mount to T2 uh, adapter. But also this particular one has uh, a thread in it for 1.25 inch, uh, one and a quarter inch filters, uh, which leads to some interesting possibilities which we'll uh, come to in later projects. So um, I'll just screw that on to the Malin cam camera. And then that allows me to screw this one on, which is uh, no doubt the T2 thread. And there we go. So it uh, needs clamping still. Um, probably needs clamping about here, but uh, I tried it on the mount and it seems quite happy uh, clamping there. And I've tried it out on a few daytime objects, which is the best way to, to try out something new on the camera in terms of focusing. So you can focus onto a, a distant TV aerial uh, on somebody's house or uh, a house roof in the distance or a church spire, anything like that. And it seems pretty happy. Uh, what I 
did do is find another lens actually, um, which is also uh, a T2 thread, or I believe it is, we'll find out now as I screw it on. Um, so I found an old 50mm uh, lens, which we'll also be trying. I haven't tried this uh, in the focus test yet, um, so I may need some additional adapters in there to get the focus uh, right working with this one. Um, so that's two additional lenses to, to play about with uh, to get different fields of view. Um, may still stick with the original CCTV lens because um, this gets quite a wide angle on it. The 200mm I may try on the moon. Um, so if we do the same as we're doing on SLU, which is to catch the lunar phases and just mirror that in the backyard, then that might come in handy. And the 50mm um, might also match some conjunctions uh, that we're doing in May, uh, just to get them a little bit closer and maybe better quality. So there we go, um, two new camera setups with the same Malin cam camera and uh, we'll see how they perform. So in this segment uh, what we're going to do is just go through the conjunctions which I hope to capture with the camera and lens assemblies that uh, I showed before. Um, so conjunctions as we mentioned in the last vlog are arrangements of two or more celestial bodies uh, that appear close together in the sky. Uh, they're not actually in reality close together but they appear in a, a sort of segment of sky as uh, being close together. These pictures by the way are from a program called Stellarium which is a uh, free download uh, planetarium program which I will cover in a future vlog. Um, not in detail but certainly some things to help you plan and see what's up in the sky um, just as we're doing here in fact. So uh, shows us quite neatly the arrangement of the conjunction which we hope to see. Uh, this one is from the 12th of May and it's uh, at 3 o'clock universal time which uh, for me in the UK will be 4 o'clock British summer time. Uh, so quite an early one. And what we can see is the moon is close to Jupiter and Saturn uh, on this uh, this morning. And it's in uh, sort of just past the southerly direction. So between south and southeast, I'll need to look and point the camera. So the next conjunction will be the very next morning. So what we will see is the moon will continue on its orbit and be this side of Jupiter and Saturn. So let's move to that one, which will be the 13th of May. And there we go, the moon's uh, moved further along. So this is also a good demonstration. You can watch this with your eyes as well, so you don't need a telescope or camera to capture this. Um, these planets should be bright enough to see with your eye. Um, although it won't be as dark as this, uh, so it'll be a, a sort of twilighty background. Um, so yeah, we should see and be able to capture the moon the other side as it continues on its orbit then. The next conjunction is with Mars. So we can see here now we're further in the southeast and the moon has again moved along its orbit. It's away from Jupiter and Saturn which are over here and it's actually close to Mars so this will hopefully be in the camera's field of view. Next conjunction uh, it will have moved along its orbit a little bit so rather than being around here uh, with Mars so on the uh, 16th it will have moved along a bit and will be this side of Mars. And finally, uh, we change from morning to uh, an evening. So the moon has actually moved quite a long way on its orbit by this point. And it's in fact, it's gone past the sun uh, or past its conjunction with the sun. And it's now uh, on the other side of the sun uh, and it's near uh, the planet Venus and Mercury. So good time to try and spot Mercury as well. Um, all these are hugging quite close to the horizon. You can see the sun here is, is just setting, so if we might need to leave it a little bit longer to get a bit darker. Uh, Venus should be well visible, but uh, not sure Mercury will. And of course the moon will be well visible, but uh, hopefully we'll capture Mercury as well. Uh, and the, it will be, of course, a lot brighter than this, so it'll be a twilight sky uh, that we capture this in. That's it for the conjunctions. Um, this is another sort of zoomed out Stellarium view of the whole sky. And uh, this is in fact from uh, a view from Santiago in Chile. 
So what I've been doing with the SLU telescope, so away from conjunctions now and, and uh, moving on to a comet that I've been following as a project and that other members of SLU have been following. Um, this comet is at the moment, uh, as I'm speaking, visible in the southern sky and it's descending here closer to the horizon and closer to the sun. You can see the sun is uh, just below the horizon here. And um, we hopefully capture a few shots of Comet Swan, which is a brilliant looking comet. It's got a wonderfully detailed tail and capture that as it uh, then will disappear from Chile and hopefully then we capture some of it in the northern hemisphere but it will be hugging very close to the horizon and very close to the sun so it could be very very low down um, this is the comet uh, out here on the 15th of the 5th so these tick marks are not quite aligning to the dates but they are separated by a day each time uh, and it will be moving this direction and the sun you can just see the flare of the sun here um, so the, the sky will be quite bright um, and we hope that the comet will also be quite bright so that we should be able to see it and capture it uh, and hopefully I'll capture it with the backyard camera um, with a bit of luck uh, or we'll just very carefully use binoculars so when you you need to be very careful when you're clo close to the sun um, that it doesn't suddenly rise and come into your field of view of binoculars that's very very dangerous um, so what should probably be doing is pointing only the camera uh, in this direction and using the computer control on the camera so that we don't get anywhere near the sun. Just to show you how close to the sun that is I've got a sort of midday um, version of this and you can see uh, again for the same time so this is when the sun has fully risen and you can see just how close they are so you need to be very very careful and the comet needs to be quite bright for us to be able to see it in that uh, twilight morning sky. Still, we'll give it a go and hopefully in the next vlog uh, we can see some results of the, the UK one, but uh, I do already have some images from the Chile uh, apparition, so hopefully I can show those uh, after this segment and we'll see some nice colorful photos uh, from myself and other members on SLU uh, using the Chile telescopes to uh, capture this comet and its tail. It's, uh, yeah, it's a wonderful comet. Okay, so here I am logged in at SLU and uh, I'm going to start the lunar quest. So we're going to try and do this throughout May, but it doesn't really matter if it takes longer than that, uh, as with uh, most telescopes, the weather can keep us closed. So what I'm going to do is go up to this little icon here, which exposes uh, another menu. And I'm going to choose quests. And you can see there's, there's quite a few there now. What I want to do is find the lunar phases one, which is here. And you can see it's a starter quest. So if I go to view that one. Now, before you get going, you need to click the start quest button, but you can actually take a look at the quest and what it entails without uh, doing that. So you can go to these uh, various steps and see what's behind them. And the main one is uh, actually done outside of the quest. So what you do is you schedule the SLU telescopes to capture each of these uh, events. Uh, so a waxing crescent moon or a first quarter moon. 
and uh, it does advise you that Canary 2 ultra wide field is the best telescope for this one. Um, you actually book Canary 2 ultra wide field and wide field at the same uh, mission slot, so you just book Canary 2 and you'll get the ultra wide field uh, um, photograph. In fact, it doesn't return an image for the wide field uh, telescope on this one because it's a custom setup. Uh, and as we go through this quest, I won't show it now um, because what we'll do is just start this quest and then we'll uh, schedule the first of our uh, phases, which is this waxing crescent moon here. And uh, the reason I'm taking new images, because I've probably got one in my photo roll already, uh, is that Paul Cox, uh, the um, Chief Astronomical uh, Director of SLU, has customized some moon recipes, especially for this quest, so they get cropped uh, to a nice size and we can add them in uh, quite conveniently. So, uh, yeah, that's what the quest is gonna be about. We're gonna collect these as we go through May and uh, I'll go back into this quest, we'll revisit it. And as you take these pictures, the next steps, um, if I go back one, are looking at each of those phases and you get a little bit of information about that particular phase and uh, if you've taken your picture already you'll see that placed in the document and at the very end we get the reward of a badge uh, but we also get to uh, download a poster with all the images that we've taken um, that you can send off to the printers or print off on your own home printer so uh, rather nice thing to do okay so I'm gonna just click start a quest here and you can see it now changes to in progress and we can now leave this page um, while we go and schedule some slots and then we'll come back to this first step as we go through the month uh, and add in the pictures hopefully. Okay so uh, how do we then schedule the moon slot? Now during the whole month you can expect that other people have uh, also booked slots uh, on these particular phase missions. So um, probably the easiest thing for me to use here is what we call the RoboSnap functionality, which is to um, share the picture uh, that someone's already scheduled uh, and you'll get delivered those images. So the way we'll do that is we know which telescope we want to use. So we'll go to mission setup by telescope. to do is to find the Canary 2 telescope so we'll click on this one here and as we thought um, so th throughout the, the month there will be people already scheduling moon slots so uh, it makes sense to pick one of these now we get up to five robo snaps so we get several chances so what I'm going to do is pick the middle two of these and robo snap them we do that by clicking on these ellipses here and select Robo Snap to Hub and Schedule Mission. That's that one done, so I can go back. And you can see I've got no ellipses on there anymore, so I'm actually Robo Snapped on that one. But I can select another one, so uh, just in case the satellite goes through that one uh, or something goes wrong with it, let's do another one. Robo Snap to Photo Hub, Schedule Mission. That's just in case something goes wrong with that one, I'm going to do another one. <laughs> there we go. Right, so I'm now robo snapped on those uh, missions. And let's see if they show up on my dashboard as missions that I'm going to. So if I go back to the home screen, which is this little icon up here. you can see I've got a, a missions tab if you're a new member you might also have starter quests over here but you can come along and, and click any of these so let's click missions and there we are yes it's uh, it's got them in there uh, and the ellipses presumably allow me to cancel yeah which I don't want to do so uh, yeah we're all set up for waxing crescent moon as long as canary 2 uh, is online tonight so we'll revisit afterwards and see what picture we get
Well, here we are then, a couple of days later. Uh, so let's return to our Lunar Quest. So if we click on uh, Quests, having logged in, and we can see our Lunar Quest is uh, ready for us to enter. Okay, so um, I had some emails saying that the missions that I'd set up, um, which I set up for, uh, I think, Waxing Crescent, and I also set one up for um, the first quarter moon. Now, some of the phases may only be visible for one night, um, typically first quarter, last quarter, and full moon. Um, so you need to sort of capture those, especially if you're doing it within a month and rely on good weather um, on those particular nights. Um, but if not, then you can collect it over a couple of months, doesn't really matter. Okay, so um, all of the pictures are collected in step one. So let's go into there. And you can see actually we've got a nice graphic here. So if I click on this, you'll see this is an animated graphic that shows you all of the phases uh, of the moon as we go through. So you can see we've still got uh, a few to collect, but we should have um, the waxing crescent and the first quarter, I believe. Okay, so um, because we've got those in uh, April and May, let's click on find image. And you can see the waxing crescent we collected on April 29th. And we can pick the most pleasing picture that we uh, uh, see here. So this, this one's a little offset to the left. Uh, this one's roughly central. So is that one. So I, I quite like this one. So let's pick that one. And there we go. So that's inserted itself uh, in there. The other one that we had was uh, the first quarter moon. So let's have a look on that. And there we can see on April 30th, we captured that one. And again, I quite like this sort of central one here. So let's go for that. There we go. You can change your mind later so you can edit image <coughs> and put a better picture in if you want. Um, I also did waxing gibbous moon, um, but phases like this, if I click find image just to show you the one we captured, it's almost at the moment as though it's uh, sort of first quarter or very close to first quarter. You can see it's just over first quarter. Uh, but I'm going to try and capture that uh, a bit better, a bit more illuminated over here on the left hand side um, before I uh, put that one in. So I'll just go back. But I've got this one in the bank just in case we get bad weather. Uh, at least I have that one. So those are the first two um, that we have collected. Now, if I go back, what I can show you is when you collect images, um, they generally uh, is a placeholder uh, against that phase. And if we go to the waxing crescent moon, for example, we should find our picture is in that placeholder now. And there it is. And we can answer a little question later on on that. Uh, but we'll come back to that one. So there we are. We're kicking off with the uh, lunar uh, phases quest and we'll return to this in the next vlog uh, and hopefully show that completed or uh, at least show you the progress on that so uh, great fun uh, and as we uh, go through this uh, at the end we can claim the badge and uh, hopefully um, there's a poster to download and you can see in the first two placeholders uh, the photos we've already collected are already in there uh, and as we complete more phases it will fill this in uh, and it'd be nice we can download that and uh, print it off or send it off for printing uh, or share it on social media. So let's come back later and see uh, in the next vlog how far we've got.